Job was born on January 10th, 1607, in Orle Orléans, France. He was baptized the same day. His father was a merchant. He had five brothers and three sisters. His family was highly respected. Isaac Jug loved to play outside. He grew up close to the Loire River, so he was an expert swimmer. He was a fast runner. He was thin but strong. He was homeschooled until he was about 10. Then he entered the new Jesuit college built in his town. These were schools that the sons of the nobles attended. These boys came not only from Orléans, but also from all of France's largest cities, including Paris. He would have dressed elegantly, like the nobility, but he was attracted to the virtuous way of life that the priests taught him, and his best friends were the same. He loved to read. When he was 17 years old, he needed to decide what work he wanted to do. He could be a merchant like his father, or a lawyer like his uncles, or he could take a government post. But he had always felt God was calling him to the priesthood, so on October 24, 1624, when he was 17 years old, he entered the Jesuit College of Rouen. Exactly two years later, he pronounced his first vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. A few days later, he was studying at the College of La Fleche in Anjou, where he became impassioned about going to New France, modern-day Quebec. In 1629, when he was back in Rouen, he first met two missionaries who would later be martyred in New France like him, Father Lallemont and Father de Brebeau. In 1633, he entered Clermont College in Paris, where he was ordained into the priesthood in 1636. During Isaac Jogues' education, Louis XIII and Anne of Austria were king and queen of France, and Cardinal Richelieu was the king's chief minister. Urban VIII was pope. King Louis XIII and Cardinal Richelieu worked together to claim, explore, and settle New France, which is where Father Isaac Jug was sent in the spring of 1636. On April 8, 1636, his ship started sailing across the Atlantic Ocean from Jeff to New France. He arrived in a small frontier ta town called Mizu, where he was greeted by two priests and then immediately prayed. From there, he went on to Quebec, then to Three Rivers, and finally his assigned destination to minister to the Huron natives in their own villages. Before he left Three Rivers, Father Jacques witnessed Algonquin brutality toward an enemy. On August 13, 1636, a group of Algonquin canoes and warriors paddled to the shore, with one Iroquois captive. The women and children waiting on shore jumped on him as he got out of the canoe. They beat him with clubs and ropes, burned his body and, and his mouth, and bit his fingers, arms, and legs. It is recorded that one squaw even cut off the Iroquois' stump and tried to make him swallow it. When he could not, she roasted it and gave it to the children to suck on. As the resident priest, Father Le Jeune, rushed to stop the torture, Father Jug watched in disbelief, not realizing that ten years later he would be tortured in the same way. A week after that horrible incident, Father Antoine Daniel, another of the North American martyrs, came with the Hurons by canoe to pick up supplies and Father Jug. Although the Hurons could be violent and cruel toward their enemies, they were friendly with the French and welcomed Father Jug, the Black Robe. They gave him a new name, Andesson, which means Bird of Prey. They left Three Rivers for their village on August 24th. A little boy named Jean Agneau 
went with Father Jugues and the Hurons. Father Jugues took care of little Jean and taught him how to be faithful to God. At the Huron village, Father Jugues once again met Father de Brebeuf and Father Gagnier, both eventually martyred by the Native Americans in New France. Father Jugues estimated that there were approximately 30,000 natives in the region who spoke Huron. In addition, there were also allies who spoke a similar language, including the Mohawks called man-eaters by other Indian nations. Father Jugues really wanted to catechize all of these people as a minister. Father Jugues took care of the physical and spiritual needs of all his missions. Father Jugues himself had to fight a serious illness. He also had to fight against the superstitious beliefs of the people and the sorcery of medicine men that put his life in danger many times in seasons, in every season, in all weather. Father Jugues and his companions walked and paddled to several villages, many of which did not welcome them and scared them, verbally abused them. In 1642, Father Isaac Jugues and Juané Goupoul were taken captive in the French territory in present-day Canada and brought to the Mohawk village called Osternenon in the Dutch territory, later known as New York State. The location of Osernenon is now the National Shrine of the North American Martyrs in Auriesville, New York. As captives, they were brutally tortured, including having to run the gauntlet more than once, and, like the man-eaters did, had some of their fingers burned or chewed off. They ate off Father Jug's thumbs and index fingers because they knew that those were the only ones that could touch the Blessed Sacrament. Juané Goupoul was killed on September 29, 1642, in that village, and his body was thrown into a ravine. Father Jugues was able to quickly bury it under some stones in the stream, but warriors soon found it and discarded it. Father Jugues was able to escape with the help of the Dutch and returned to France. Pope Urban VIII named him a living martyr and allowed Father Jugues to continue to celebrate Mass with his mutilated hands. This dispensation had never been granted before. Father Jugues wanted to return to the New World, and he received permission to do so in 1646. He returned to Osernen and was killed on the night of October 18, 1646. While he entered a longhouse, his skull was crushed and he was beheaded. His companion, Jean de Lalande, was also killed early the next morning. Because the bones of Father Jugues, Brother Goupil, and Monsieur, Le, and Monsieur de Lalande were never found, the entire area of the Indian village is considered their reliquary. This area is now the 400-acre shrine of Our Lady of Martyrs in Ariesville, New York. On June 29th, 1930, St. Isaac Jugues and his seven companion martyrs were canonized by Pope Pius XI. Together, they are called the North American Martyrs, and they are honored on October 19th. Brother Juané Goupil accompanied Jesuit priests to New France as a lay missionary, but he professed religious vows as a Jesuit lay brother while in North America. He was killed after being hit on the head several times with a tomahawk because he taught Native American children the sign of the cross. He was the first North American martyr. Father Isaac Jugues is often separated out from the other seven martyrs. For example, you might hear people say, St. Isaac Jogue and Companions, or St. Isaac Jogue and the North American Martyrs. This is probably because he suffered for a longer period of time in a more extreme way. He ministered, then was taken as a captive and tortured, became enslaved, 
escaped, recuperated, and returned, was held hostage and tortured again, and finally was killed. He was martyred by tomahawk and beheaded. Monsieur Jean de la Lande guarded, protected, and guided Jesuit priests through the North American wilderness. He was martyred with a tomahawk and beheading after trying to leave a longhouse to rescue St. Isaac Jug, body, and bury it. Father Antoine de Yale was killed when he, sh he shot, when he was shot and carried a crucifix toward attacking Iroquois warriors. They threw his body in a burning mission chapel. Father Jean de Brebeuf came to Canada when he was 32 years old. Thousands of Native Americans were baptized because of his work. He knew the language of the Hurons and helped his fellow missionaries by writing the catechism and a dictionary in their language. He died because of torture at the mission at Salt Santa Marie in Canada. Gabriel Lallemont took a vow to sacrifice his life for the Indians' conversion. He was tortured to death and with Father Brebeuf. Father Shaw Gagnier was aware that his brothers Daniel, Brebeuf, and Lallemont had been killed, and he knew his turn was coming, yet he did not run away. He was killed during an Iroquois attack on the Indian village where he served. Father Noel Chabanel was probably a lot like you and me. He had a hard time living at the mission. He couldn't learn the language and he didn't like the food or how the Indians lived. He suffered spiritual dryness during his whole stay in Canada, but he made a vow to remain until death in his mission, and he was killed there with Father Gagné. All eight of the North American martyrs suffered and died so that the good news of Jesus Christ could be shared with all persons. These priests and frontiersmen suffered physio physiological ailments, mental challenges, and physical brutality. They gave their lives for the faith. Other Catholic martyrs and saints from this time and place include many Native American converts to Catholicism, including Joseph Shihua Tenha, his wife Mary Oneta, his daughter Teresa, and his brother Joseph Teon de Chorin, Eustace Aha Sistari, St. Kateri Tekawitha, and all the other Native Americans who can sincerely receive the sacraments of initiation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy martyrs and patrons, protect this land which you have blessed by the shedding of your blood. Renew in these days our Catholic faith, which you help to establish in this new land. Bring all of our fellow citizens to a knowledge and love of the truth. Make us zealous in the profession of our faith, so that we may continue and perfect the work which you have begun with so much labor and suffering. Pray for our homes, our schools, our missions, for vocations, for the conversion of sinners, the return of those who have wandered from the fold, and the perseverance of all the faithful. And foster a deeper and increasing unity among all Christians. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord Jesus, your sainted martyrs, Isaac, Jean, Juané, Jean, Gabriel, Antoine, Charles, and Noel, loved you with all their hearts. O Holy Spirit of God, you cause these men to be courageous and to want to win souls for you. 
They dedicated their lives to sharing the good news about you, O Lord, with the native peoples of the northern regions of North America. By the help of their prayers for us, we ask that you cause us also to grow in our brotherly concern and steadfast courage so that we may be witnesses of your love in these difficult times. When I feel embarrassed about making the sign of the cross in public, Rene Goupil, pray, pray for, for us. us. When I'm scared of being bullied, St. Isaac Jug, pray, pray for, for us. When my loyalty is being tested, St. Jean de la Londe, pray, pray for, for us. us. When I am teased for what I believe, St. Antoine Danielle, pray, pray for us. When I need to admonish a sinner, St. Jean de Brebeuf, pray, pray for, for us. When my friends ask me to teach him or her about my faith, St. Gabriel Lalimont, pray for us. When I dread something and I need to be brave, St. Charles Gagné, pray for us. When times are hard, I start to feel that God is not listening to my problems. Say, Noel Chavanel, pray for us. Holy Mary, Queen of Martyrs, pray for us. <laughs> 